G-Skills new Trident Z Royal Series DDR4 RGB memory kits are made for high-class PCs, with each meticulously crafted module featuring a full-length crystalline light bar atop a polished heat spreader with a luxuriant reflective gold or silver finish, reminding you to appreciate the finer things in life, like the freedom to choose from Trident Z Royal RGB kits in 16GB to 128GB capacities and up to DDR4 4600MHz memory speeds. If you're looking to give your high-class system build the Royal treatment, click the sponsor link in the description below. What do we have here? So guys, what we have right here in front of me is the makings of a themed build. Yes, Asus hit me up actually a couple months back to do a sponsored build that's a giveaway. Now, I typically don't do sponsored videos, so I wanna be clear here, this build video is not necessarily sponsored. The giveaway is sponsored. You have the opportunity to potentially win this entire system I'm putting together, which includes the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 monitor as well. So that said, this is an absolutely epic system. We have a RTX 2080 Ti, the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 edition. Everything is the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 edition for the most part here. We've also got an Intel Core i7-9700K, unlocked eight core processor for your processing and gaming needs. A wide array of Asus ROG products here with lighting features and a headset. And the monitor, by the way, is the PG258, which is an ROG Swift monitor with G-Sync support at 240 hertz refresh rate. So guys, this is a, an impressive, impressive pile of hardware, and I'm gonna go over each piece so you know what's involved. Starting, of course, with this monitor, I already mentioned PG258. Apart from the Call of Duty theming, this is a 25 inch monitor, and it's actually 1920 by 1080 resolution, but that is because the refresh rate is so dang high. 240 hertz refresh rate, as well as one millisecond response time, so this is an ideal gaming monitor. Also features support for NVIDIA G-Sync, as well as 3D Vision. So that's gonna pair up real nicely with the graphics card, which is the Call of Duty Blackout edition of the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. I used two of these, the non-Call of Duty versions, in my attempt to beat Jay and Steve when we were doing the 2080 Ti overclocking races. Uh, they served me well, although I never actually went and did exotic cooling on them, so you know, you can only go so far with the air cooling. But moving on. For a motherboard, we've got the Maximus 11 Hero, so this is a Z390 motherboard overclocking uh, Call of Duty Black Ops edition. Of course, once again, so once we get that out of the box, we'll give you guys a closer look at it so you can see what sort of aesthetic difference is. Other than that, it's the same Maximus 11 Hero, so one of the better overclocking motherboards from Asus. And then we got a bunch of peripherals here. So the ROG Strix Flare. I'm gonna leave these peripherals in their boxes since they're destined for a uh, giveaway winner at some point. I don't wanna taint them too much by getting them dusty or anything like that. But I've been using the standard edition of the ROG Strix Flare keyboard, just not Call of Duty Black Ops themed, and it's a real solid keyboard. And this one has Cherry MX Silver switches as well as compatibility with Aura Sync. Also including a very nice mouse mat to go along with the ROG Gladius 2 Origin mouse. That's right up here. This mouse can be used in wired or wireless mode. It's got a Call of Duty Black Ops 4 logo at the back, which will light up, and of course, Aura Sync compatibility as well. For a headset, we have the Asus ROG Delta, which features quad DACs. It's a gaming headset, so you got a mic and headphone, both included. This uses ESS DACs to handle your audio processing, and it also features a USB Type-C connector, which is uh, kind of a first when it comes to gaming headsets. And of course, it's also wireless. For power supply, we have the ROG Thor 1200 watt. This is a platinum rated power supply. Also features Aura Sync compatibility, a 10 year warranty, and 1200 watts, which is more than enough than we'll need for this actual computer. Also gonna throw in an ROG Spotlight here. This is uh, just sort of an aesthetic product. You can shine an ROG logo on a wall. Wherever you wanna show the ROG logo, the Spotlight will do that. We've also got the ROG Aura Terminal. This is an addressable RGB hub, so we can connect up all the addressable RGB stuff in the system, which is a significant amount and get it all working. We've got the ROG Ryujin 360 liquid CPU cooler, 360 millimeter radiator, Noctua fans, as well as an OLED display on the actual pump block unit itself. And for a case, we're gonna be using the Lian Li 011 Air RGB. This was kind of my contribution via Lian Li to this build because I wanted a case that I've worked with before that's a good case and also that has plenty of airflow since we're installing quite a bit of hardware in this system. And the remaining key components here, we've got the 9700K, of course, we have a six series 512 gig NVMe SSD from Intel and we've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB memory uh, that's 2666 speed for 8 gig sticks total. Well that was a lot of stuff to unbox very exciting but I think we're finally ready to build. Well there's one more thing left to unbox that's the Lian Li 011 Air.
at this point, the power supply is installed and I've just been sort of uh, reality checking where everything else is going to get in because we've got this 360 millimeter radiator and I think we're gonna install that in the top, mainly because I wanna use these included Noctua Chromax fans. These are NFF12s, by the way, because they're not gonna, they'll be less visible. And if we're gonna have RGB anything, it's probably gonna be visible. So we'll keep that in the top. This is the air version of the case. So it comes with a couple 120 millimeter fans. So we're gonna keep those as intakes at the front. And then since this is the RGB version of this case, they give you three more fans. These are RGB with lights in the central hub. So I think I'm gonna install those in the uh, side intake or exhaust. And I'm gonna have these as intakes. These fans have rubber vibration dampening pads, but you have to install them yourselves. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure all my fans, my intake fans, which are two on the front, three on the side, I'm just trying to route all the cables right into this area because uh, the fan, the three fan pack came with a little, a little splitter here. So I'm gonna use that to plug all five fans into the same fan header on the motherboard. And I can mount that with adhesive out in this area. So there's just enough room here. I'm trying to cinch these up close so I can route the cables in between and sort of use the fans to hold the cables in place, sort of a makeshift cable management solution. I'm looking at this little fan splitter and I'm realizing, uh, you know, you can connect up to six fans to it, but there's no supplemental power. So all the power is coming from whatever source plug you connect this end into. And it's actually fine for these Lian Lee fans that ship with it because they're only 0.15 amps draw max per fan. But just to be on the safe side and also, you know, if I was to connect other fans that drew more power, there's a high amperage fan header on this motherboard. So I'm gonna connect to that so there's plenty of power for those fans. All right guys, this build is assembled. I haven't turned it on yet, so I'm hoping things work, but we got the LED strip, addressable LED strip run around the edge of the case here. It is magnetic, so it's just held in place by the magnets. Graphics cards installed, I ran the power cables up for that, and that's to help eliminate a bit of the GPU sag that might potentially happen with a larger graphics card. Although upon initial installation, this graphics card wasn't really sagging at all, so that's good. Other than that, everything came together pretty nicely. I was trying to plan ahead for the RGB to make sure everything was wired up there properly, but we got tons of intake on this system. Uh, we of course got the triple fan 360 millimeter radiator at the top for exhaust and there's some ex extra exhaust at the back. I'm just talking because I'm nervous that this might actually not work when I turn it on. So I'm just going to turn it on. How about that? Power switch is on. We have lights. And now the moment of truth. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. So as I somewhat anticipated, when connected directly to the LED, the RGB LED headers on the motherboard, because the motherboard is a Call of Duty motherboard, all of the LEDs are orange. Our Corsair Vengeance RGB memory is not lighting up, it's just doing the rainbow color, and we also have some LEDs on the region, uh, all-in-one liquid cooler as well, that's still going rainbow LED, so gonna need to install Windows to get into the software, because this one's controlled via a USB connection, and then the memory uh, connects directly to the motherboard, of course. So as I was putting this system together, I was kind of reminded of when I used to play Diablo. And in Diablo, they'd have set armor that you could get. And you'd want to get all the pieces of the set, put them all together, because they all matched. And then you get set bonuses and stuff like that. I don't know if that analogy completely applies to a system like this, but it is, I think, the first time that I've put together a largely themed computer with all parts that are from mainly the same manufacturer, Asus in this case. And most of these are also Call of Duty Black Ops 4 themed. So we get an overall black and orange color scheme. Of course, these are RGB LEDs, 
so we could go in and adjust those two if we really wanted to. But guys, this entire system was built to be given away to one of you lucky viewers at home out there. So stay tuned for a future video where I'll be announcing the giveaway details and how to enter and all that good stuff. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this one. Definitely subscribe so you can know when the giveaway actually kicks off. I'll also be announcing it on my Twitter. So a big thank you to Asus for providing these parts to build this system so that it could be given away in the future. Thanks to you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you think of this system build in the comments section down below and we'll see you guys in the next video.